Hello, Scorpio. This is Citrina, and this is your July 2018 astrology forecast. Let's get right into it because Jupiter goes direct on July 10th, and it's going to be in your first house. And remember, the first house deals with how you appear to the world. It, it talks about your demeanor, things of that nature. So everything you've been thinking about while Jupiter has been retrograde as far as um, your outlook on life, how you want to present yourself to the world, things of that nature, you're going to start seeing action in those areas once Jupiter goes direct. So that's really great. It's something to look forward to. Let's keep moving on because Mercury is going to be retrograde this month. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mercury goes retrograde on July 26th. Now, Mercury is still in Leo. And remember, Mercury rules communication, technology, um, things of that nature. Communication, technology, travel. So if you are planning to buy any electronics, try to do it before Mercury goes retrograde. And Mercury goes retrograde on July 26th through August 18th. So between that time period, it's not a good time to buy electronics, book travel. You will run into a lot of miscommunications. So just prepare yourself. And um, things such as you will type up an email to send out to people and you thought you sent it out, but you start receiving emails saying, hey, uh, where is the email you said you were sending me? And you double check and you realize you typed everything up, but you didn't press send. That's the type of thing that happens when Mer Mercury is retrograde. So watch out for that. Let's move on to Venus because Venus is going to be in Leo until the 10th and on the 10th it moves into Virgo. Now Venus in Leo is going to be in your 10th house of career, what you're known for in the world. And then it moves to house 11 which deals with your friendships. Let's talk a little bit about the energy of Venus in Leo versus the energy of Venus in Virgo. So when Venus is in Leo, that tends to be an energy of extravagance. You tend to want to splurge. However, when Venus is in Virgo, it is more of a frugal energy. So for you, Venus in Virgo falls in your 11th house dealing with your friendships, dealing with your social organizations, things of that nature. Also, Venus in Virgo is more of an analytical uh, energy. So you do see a lot of couples break up around this time because when Venus is in Virgo, you can't help but notice the flaws in your, um, in your mate or in the person you're dating. So watch out for that. Now... If you are dating a Scorpio and you want to impress them during this time while Venus is in Virgo, starting on the 10th of the month through the end of the month, well, with Scorpios, now this is a solar Scorpio chart, which means that it's a general chart for all Scorpios. Now, if you really want to find out, let's say you're dating a Scorpio and you want to find out the type of person they are. It is good to get a birth chart interpretation or a, a synastry reading. And what is that? That is when we look at your birth chart and superimpose it to your partner's birth chart. And that tells you where you're compatible, where you might butt heads, things of that nature. So anyway, I'm looking at a solar chart. This is for all Scorpios. So it's a general um, chart, basically. So, for Scorpios, Venus in Virgo falls in the 11th house. So, if you're dating a Scorpio and you want to impress them, the things that they are going to be looking at and analyzing you on this month, 
is how do you treat your friends? How much time do you spend with your friends? Uh, what social organizations do you belong to? Things of that nature. That's what is going to impress a Scorpio while Venus is in Virgo. Okay, so keep that in mind because if you're dating a Scorpio and you want to impress them, treat your friends good. Um, spend time with your friends, but not so much time um, that the Scorpio you're dating feels like you are neglecting them. Okay, so just, that's just some things to watch out for. Okay, so let's move on because Mars is in Aquarius. This is just a reminder because Mars went into um, went retrograde last month. So Mars is still retrograde. It will be retrograde all month. Okay, so remember when Mars is retrograde, it really doesn't feel like doing too much. And for you, Mars is retrograde in your fourth house of home and family. So if there's any home uh, renovation projects you are thinking about working on, uh, you really won't feel like working on them until after August 26th. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so we did talk about Jupiter and Scorpio. Let's talk about the sun. The sun moves in, I mean, the sun is in Cancer until the 22nd of the month. And as of the 22nd, we can start telling all of our Leo friends happy birthday because the sun goes into Leo. And... Uh, so it's going to be Leo season as of the 22nd of this month. So that's great because Leos like everything to be extravagant, right? Now, one thing I do want to talk about is that there will be a square that we need to talk about. The sun will square Uranus on July 25th. This is a time where you can expect to hear unexpected news. And the news that you hear about, it could be good news. However, because this is a square, squares usually represent a challenging time or a challenging, it's a, it's a challenging act, uh, aspect. So for you, Scorpio, the sun will be in your 10th house of career. And then Uranus is in your 7th house dealing with partnerships. So you will hear news, unexpected news around the time that time of the month, about July 25th. <clears throat> now the news can be about anything, but because it falls in your house of career, in your house of partnerships, it could very well be something dealing with those topics. Let's say one thing I can think about is that, let's say you're a lawyer. Well, the head of the firm might offer you to be a partner in the firm. Okay, so that's like unexpected news you weren't thinking about. Or, you know, it's something you weren't expecting. So, remember, it could be good, it could be bad, whatever news you hear. But it will be, it looks like more than likely for you, Scorpio, it will be surrounding your career and your partnerships. So, just keep that in mind. Now, let's look at the new moon because... The new moon this month is going to be a partial solar eclipse. Remember, new moons are all about new beginnings. Now, let's talk about also what is a solar eclipse. A solar eclipse is when the moon is between the sun and the earth. Okay, so most of us will feel this energy for at least six months. And consider it a preview of what to expect next year and the the signs that will feel this energy the most are aries cancer libra and capricorn this solar eclipse energy is a time where um it's an energy all about transformation it's about taking action things of that nature now it will be in opposition to pluto so you can expect to hear about some type of crisis or drama around this time. Now, it might not be related to you. It could be like world crisis or, you know, local crisis or local drama, things of that nature. But just beware. Now, for you, this new moon in Cancer falls in your ninth house, which, it, which deals with other cultures. It deals with high, um, higher education. It deals with the law. 
long distance travel, things of that nature. So if you need to focus on anything around the new moon, you can focus on those topics. But I'm going to pull one card to see what you need to focus on. What the cards, what do the cards say you need to focus on at this new moon, Scorpio? Let's see, Scorpio, Scorpio. The Scorpio need to focus on at the new moon. Prosperity begins. This is awesome, Scorpio. Which is really great because remember, Jupiter is going direct in your first house on July 10th. And then now, this oracle is giving you a message that whatever you are starting, whatever you start on this new moon, it will be prosperous. So keep that in mind because that's great news. You have Jupiter going direct in Scorpio in your first house. You have the new moon in Cancer in your ninth house. It will be a great time for you to plan a long distance trip at this new moon. Um, because the new moon is in Cancer in your ninth house. So some place that you've always thought about visiting would be great because the new moon is in cancer cancer is all about being in your feelings and then the ninth house can deal with long distance travel other cultures so let's say you've always dreamed about going to australia this is a good time to book that trip you have jupiter and scorpio jupiter expands wherever it touches so jupiter wants to expand you jupiter oh beware of overeating when jupiter's in your first house um, because Jupiter expands wherever it touches and so right now it's trying to expand you so just keep that in mind but also Jupiter wants to expand you not just your physical appearance but it wants to expand your outlook on life things of that nature so what better time to plan a trip than when Jupiter is in Scorpio and the new moon is in cancer in your ninth house ninth house dealing with long-distance travel that's just an idea and then on top of that, you have this card, Prosperity Begins. That's all good signs. Let's keep moving on. That's the new moon. Now let's look at the full moon because the full moon will be a total lunar eclipse. Let's talk about lunar eclipse. Let's see what is a lunar eclipse. A lunar eclipse is when the earth is, is between the sun and the moon. Now we all will feel this energy however Taurus Leo Scorpio and Aquarius will feel this energy the most this is going to be a very emotional type of energy okay because just think about it the full moon tends to be an emotional time and then by it being a total lunar eclipse it's like the full moon on steroids okay so just keep that in mind because the eclipse tends to um, help you remove things out of your life that no longer serve you so if there's something in your life that you feel like is not serving you something that you've been thinking about releasing out of your life but you just haven't been able to the total lunar eclipse on July 27th is going to help you release it okay so remember, it's going to be an emotionally charged time. And also Mars, don't forget Mars is in Aquarius also. So Mars can bring out anger in people. Okay, so that's your information about this month. Now, what I want to do also is I have grouped together like two different major um major points this month and I've grouped them into two I put them into two groups the first group I'm calling the take action group the first group is going to be Jupiter going into going direct in Scorpio on July 10th with the new moon in Cancer on July 12th so these two together happening within days of each other it is a sure sign that you will see action in the area of 
expanding yourself as far as your outlook, your personality, things of that nature, along with long distance travel, higher education, uh, the legal system, things of that nature. So just keep that in mind. So that's the first group. To me, those two, the Jupiter and the sun are working together. I'm sorry, Jupiter and the moon, the new moon are working together. Remember, the new moon is all about transformation, new beginnings, and, um, sorry, transformation, new beginnings, and that's pretty much it. Getting things started, basically, the new moon. Now, the second group I want to talk about, I'm calling this second group the emotional gang. Okay, let's see what's going on. We have the sun going into Leo on July 22nd. Leos can be dramatic. We have the sun square Uranus on July 25th. That's about unexpected news. And then we have Mercury retrograde in Leo on July 26th. That's about something possibly going haywire. And then we have the full moon, which is a total lunar eclipse in Aquarius on July 27th. That's an emotional ball of energy waiting to happen. And then you mix that in with Mars and you will more than likely have a great chance of experiencing some type of emotional energies. Even if you're really not affected, even if it's something that you have to witness, expect those things around this time. Um, because remember, Mars can bring out anger in people. So around this time, you might see people lashing out at one another. Because even though Mars is retrograde, Mars is still Mars. And I've been giving the story about the vicious dog. So have you ever seen a vicious dog in the neighborhood? It's in their gate, but every time you pass by... The dog is barking, growling, trying to jump at you, things of that nature. So let's say one day you pass by the gate and the dog is not barking. So it makes you feel like, oh, I can reach out and touch the dog. The dog is calm today. And you reach your hand out to pet the dog and the dog bites you. Why? Because even though the dog was not barking, it's still a vicious dog. The same thing with Mars. Even though Mars is retrograde, it's still Mars. It can still bring out some anger in people. And the fact that Mars is retrograde, Mars is trying to rest. And the full moon in Aquarius with Mars is probably egging Mars on. Like, wake up. Come on. Don't you want to get angry? Let's do something. I want to see you get angry. And so Mars will wake up out of his slumber and be like, just lash out okay so just expect something like that around this time hopefully everyone has a great time everything is uh roses and daisies but be prepared that around this full moon total lunar eclipse between all of these this emotional gang is happening between July 22nd through July 27th. So around that time, just be prepared and remain calm. And just know that you might see some people act out of character, okay? So that's just something I wanted to make a note of. Now, one thing that will have help us get through this emotional period is the fact that Uranus and Saturn are in a good connection to one another and they're both in earth signs so earth signs tend to help us stay grounded also Venus is forming a bond with Pluto and they are both in earth signs so that's another thing that's going to help us by the end of the month stay grounded so Scorpio this has been your Ju uh, July 2018 astrology forecast Please like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. And until next month, Scorpio, have a great month.